This is Maginoni, and it's time for another stack of comic reviews. Let's take a look at, at what we have today. We have some DC and some Marvel. All right, let's take a look at some DC action first. Now, the Justice League of America, one thing I have to admit I was kind of happy about is this is all they did to deal with everything that's happened before. And, you know, so this way we go, here's basically what happened, and let's just move on with the story. Now, the, the thing that I think really kind of annoys me a little bit is, you know, you have the crime syndicate, and they're like, oh, we're the big bad evil villains of true evilness, and we're so evil that we are evil auras created a new villain type thing. And, but we're not going to kill the heroes, we're just going to imprison them. Well, and I'm like, why, why would you do that? And I'm like, now granted, you can say, Marinoni, you don't know what you're talking about. This prison is ingenious. It's this thing that's kind of like in another dimension, possibly, that's hidden from sight. Um, it affects everybody's mentally. You know, it's basically, they're slowly tortured over time. And they're powerless. So how, what can go wrong? That's evil. And I'm just thinking, you know what, if you really, truly want it to be evil, um, you know, that's a f maybe that's a fine and dandy thing to do. But you know what I would do? I would have uh, basically beheaded every single superhero and uh, put their heads on spikes and left them um, out on the street in front of the their headquarters. And I think that alone would have sent the proper message to say, don't mess with us. Because if you just take away their cape and rope, that doesn't really do much. Anyways, basically what's going on is Martian Manhunter Star, they, they're basically exploring this prison. And there's like a mysterious person inside who's following them. And there's this one guy here that I guess he's part of Firestorm. You know, I really, I don't read Firestorm and I don't remember who that guy is. So, you know, whatever. Anyways, he disappears and it, it, he's just basically, you're just getting, um, a sneak peek at, at to what's going on with some of these heroes. So we basically figure out what happens to uh, Wonder Woman, Shazam, Flash, and um, Superman. And you know, well, I I will admit they're pretty ingenious traps. Oh, and Green Ant Green uh, Lantern, forgot about him. They're ingenious traps, but you know, you're really leaving yourself vulnerable to just losing. Now. And again, this issue emphasizes that point because Star escapes. And I, the one thing I will throw out is this. I'm actually glad that Star escapes and is going to be a central figure to this part of the story because they made Star at the beginning this kind of like a token superhero that uh, just is basically there for her parents and um, she's supposed to be seen but never, you know, never get involved. And I think this is like a great character defining moment and I'm hope I'm really hopeful that she'll be able to work with Martian Manhunter to really uh, bring her out to the front lines and really make her character shine. Because if they fail, man, that's just gonna be one dead ass character. But otherwise, I I mean I enjoyed it. I didn't think it was necessarily fantastic, but it was entertaining. And you know, I guess that's all that really matters with that. Now, next up is Forever Evil Rogues Rebellion. Surprisingly, this didn't sell out at my comic store. I mean, everything else does that's labeled Forever Evil. Anyways, uh, what we have here is the crime syndicate, and they're going back, and um, they're seeing what happened, like what Rod did to their city. And, you know, while they did waste some extra pages with that, there was actually a lot that went on. So I don't mind them going over everything that happened in Central City. Especially, you know, you would imagine, though, if... If you were a Flash fan, you bought Grodd, so you would have already known about Grodd's Rampage. But anyways, uh, this is basically the rogues choosing a side, and then the crime syndicate sending some villains to make sure that the rogues are either with them or without them. And if they're going to be uh, not with them, then the villains are supposed to take care of them. And the villains they send, I gotta tell you, it it's a pretty pathetic group of villains. And, you know, like... Let's put it this way. Why would you send somebody who can turn into, you know, dealing with uh, typhoons and uh, plastic who throws fire 
bombs against people who can control fire and weather. Uh, you know, it, I just kind of look at that and go, are you, are you out of your mind, stupid? But that's besides the point. They're there just to serve the, they're just there for justify the means to the end type thing. Um, and then actually, the one thing I liked about this issue is what it does is for those of you who don't read the Flash, it really shows how the rogues are different from other supervillains. It really covers their ethics, their um, the way they operate, and um, I thought that they did that in a very very good job, a very very good way. Um, at the very end, though, I'm gonna. This is a little bit of a spoiler, but it's not really a spoiler because if you're keeping up with the Forever Evil, you saw them leave. But it shows a picture of um, um, the evil Death Storm thing and um, Green Lantern. And I'm telling you, Green Lantern, the way they drew him, he looks sickly. And if I was the Rogues, that's that's where I'd go right there. Just kill him quick, and then that way you could just deal with him. But Overall, I mean, I have to admit I enjoyed this issue. This actually would have been uh, going up there with the uh, for the good title, for the good and the bad. But Sp Superior Spider-Man was just so much better, especially when you look at it in terms of the artwork. The art here, well, there might have been some good moments here and there. It just doesn't stand up to what's going on over Spider-Man. But I have to admit, this was actually a really good start. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what's going to happen with the Rebellion, uh, Rogue's Rebellion. And um, what I'm hoping for is this thing actually does pan out, and then I'll just buy the trade, because um, I think that this could actually be a decent trade, if, depending upon uh, how it ends. All right, let's take a look at some Marvel. Um, what I'll do is I'll just do these two kind of roughly at the same time. Now, this here is dealing with what's going on with um, on Earth with Thanos. You have the incursion, and um, you have the invasion of uh, Wakanda looking for um, you know, Thanos' son. Now, the art is actually really well done, and this is the I, I kind of wish that these were actually double sized issues because this invasion would have been spectacular if we were actually able to get, get more pages to it. You know, all we did was we just got this very high level overview that. They, you know, the Wakanda got beat or pushed back, but we don't really get the full picture of it because we also have to deal with Thanos finding um, the um, Illuminati secret base in Necropolis, and also you have a group of the superheroes going up to space, meeting a builder or an engineer, I should say, and. Um, uh, they're basically going to start destroying worlds. And, you know, it's, this is kind of really weird because, like, there's a lot of inconsistency with the way some of these characters are acting. You know, like, like I've never really seen Reed just be like, yeah, we're just going to start killing things. And, you know, it's very, very unusual. And I'm wondering what is going to cause all of that to change. Because eventually the heroes are going to have to become more heroic and they're gonna to have to pay for their crimes so to speak so I'm kinda of curious to see when what that story is gonna be like now with this one here um, the normal adventures what we have is dealing with what happened after Thor you have the accusers um, basically um, rebelling against the supreme intelligence you have and I'm telling you this was probably one of my favorite moments where you had the annihilation wave attacking and you know as you can see I have my annihilation buddies right here and um, that was my my favorite moment watching them it was like basically Zerg rush anyways beyond that it, you know like again this is one of those things I just wish it was a double-sized issue there's so much going on and I just feel that we're getting a, a very high-level overview but, you know, the writing is really good. The art is really good. And even though there's a lot going on, I don't feel completely lost. I just have this sense of I want more, more content. But I enjoyed both of them. But this one, I will admit that this one seems a bit out of place concerning 
there's so much going on in this. And they're all, you know, loosely connected. Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, all I'm really going to say a few things about this other than, you know, the art was good. I loved the Rocket Raccoon pictures, expressions. I love Groot just throwing out, you know, they're having dialogue everywhere, and he's just like, I'm Groot. So, I mean, I don't know why, but I always find that super amusing. And basically, this is just Angela coming to terms with where she is and uh, the Guardians trusting to let her go type thing. But we all know that eventually she's going to get pulled back into the Guardians. And the next issue is when they face the music with Infinity. So, I mean, this is a decent read, but this is one of those reads that it's it's basically filling... It's like preparing you for what's to come to the future while closing out the first meeting with Angela at the same time. So it's nothing Earth's... You know, it's not spectacular or anything like that, but it's... it was For me, at least, it was an entertaining read. Okay, Battle of the Anim, Uncanny X-Men, back to Bendis again, number, Chapter 8. This was more of a battle issue. We had some great pictures, panels with the fighting, with swords going through people, but unfortunately these are like soul swords and they never kill anybody, which is so depressing. You know, man, I just wish, I just wish one of somebody would get killed by that, those big hulking, I mean, hulking swords. Anyways, um, there's some... In, they address the X, the classic X-Men about them going back to the past and they're pretty much going to be stuck here for a while at least which I don't know what to think about that. I mean part of me is just like send them back but you can't because this book is selling too much too well so what are you going to do? Plus now they have the crossover with the Guardians of the Galaxy coming out they got spanking new costumes so I don't know what the hell that's going to do with the timeline. They're going to eventually going to really have to address that at some point in time because, you know, eventually you're going to have to think. They're going to be missed. Other than that, I mean, it's a decent read, but I'm telling you this. You know, it's like above average, but it's not going to be... It's not groundbreaking. It's nothing like a Rogue's Rebellion. It's nothing like um, Ultimate Spider-Man. So, but I'm really hoping that, you know... See, the sad thing is, like, when Bendis is on, it's good. When Bendis is off, it's bad. So I just hope that they're able to keep this kind of momentum going again. And it's strong. Okay. Finally up is Hunger. Now, what we have is Rick Jones. He goes Super Saiyan on Galactus. And he pretty much takes him out. Which is, like, really surprising. Um, but with the amount of power he has. But then this sets the stage for Cataclysm. Because Galactus ultimately has to go to Earth to uh, basically recharge himself and feast. And um, Rick Jones' story does not go in that direction. It's going to go somewhere else. So I'm really curious, which is actually a good thing because I want to see what the Ultimate Universe heroes are going to do against Galactus versus what Rick Jones is going to do since he already did his thing. Now, the art for me, it kind of goes, at moments I liked it, and other moments I just, you know, I thought it was really bad. I think it, sometimes it gets really sloppy. Yeah, especially when you're dealing with all those little uh, god lactus things. But, um, I mean, I understand that that's a lot of, what are you going to do? You know, they're tiny things. But I think, but I have seen other artists do a much better job with things like that. I love the the new version of Galactus, the way he looks. Uh, but I think it's, like, I, for example, I think some of the spaceship designs are kind of weak. There's like a panel here where Galactus brushes, like smacks a spaceship and it just bounces away. See, like, right here, bouncing. What do you mean it's bouncing, you know? Things supposed to blow up, you know, please. You know, I don't care if you say it has a force field. Those things blow up. But anyways, um, overall, I'm, I don't, I'm not going to say that this is a very strong ending. I'm just going to say it, it was basically a means to the end to just to get it going. I think, I think actually if they had a stronger writer on it, you know, it would have been fantastic. But then, you know, all the other writers are busy doing other things right now. And I don't, I can, and there's no way Marvel's going to want to out pull Fraction or Hickman or Remender or Bendis or somebody like that and put them on the hunger. But other than that, I mean, it was a decent rate overall. You know, I don't even know if this is trade worthy or not. Other than if you want, I mean, if, I'll say it this way, if the Ultimate Universe does get eaten, then 
it's trade worthy automatically because you're going to need this and you're going to need cataclysm just so you can see that world get eaten. Anyways, that is my reviews. Um, let me get you some codes. How about we'll give you a Guardian's code? We'll get you an Avenger code. And we'll get you a battle the end. Anyways, if you have any comments or questions, let me know. Rate the video. Like the Facebook link. Do the Crunchyroll anime reviews. I'll have some manga reviews later, so until next time.